Hello, Vanguard community. Today is Wednesday, May the 6th. I'm Jennifer Methvin, Chancellor of Arkansas State University. BB, this is doing things differently and learning something new. I'm very excited about our topic today. You'll notice that I have two guests and not one. Um, and so we have with us today, Tyler Biddle um, and Keith Moore, who have been working very, very hard with a number of other people behind the scenes to make it possible for ASUBB this Saturday to enjoy a virtual commencement. So let's just take a minute, Tyler, why don't you start as our registrar, tell folks a little bit about yourself. All right, uh, my name is Tyler Biddle and I am the registrar here at Arkansas State University BB. Um, the registrar's office is responsible for maintaining the accuracy and the security of our students' educational records and for making sure that our students um, get their degrees accurately reviewed and posted uh, and organizing commencement to celebrate that accomplishment. Uh, I started with Arkansas State BB back in May of 2017 as the Director of Concurrent Enrollment. Um, and then in September of 2018, transitioned to the Registrar's Office. I love being a part of the Vanguard family here at ASU BB. And you do a great job as well. Well, Keith, you're our, our Executive Director of Marketing and Public Relations. Tell folks a little about you and your role. I am. I'm a Director of uh, Marketing and Communications here for ASU BB. Uh, I am a 35-year uh, retiree from the Arkansas Air National Guard slash U.S. Air Force. Uh, and so I came to this position about three years ago uh, with a deep background in uh, communications, journalism, um, publishing, you name it all those uh, communication type fields. So um, also kind of the guilty party on this idea for the virtual uh, commencement. So I got my fingers crossed it goes well. <laughs> it's, it's, it's gonna go great. It's gonna be absolutely fabulous. Well, okay, everybody knows the format by now. We've been doing basically five questions, basically 15 minutes. We'll cheat maybe just a little bit today. I may have a little bit more follow up today um, than normal. Uh, but I do wanna ask, open with the normal opening question for both of you. You know, we have been working remotely since March the 20th and uh, it's been very, very difficult. So if you could just both briefly, before we get to talking about commencement, comment a little bit about on that challenge for you. What's been the most challenging for you? When did you start, Keith? Uh, well, you know, for most people, they, they mentioned uh, more free time, their schedules changed. They're like, ours is uh, kind of gone the other direction, I think. Um, not unusual to be at the computer for large segments of time during the day. Uh, working remotely has been a little bit different for me because as most people, you know, are home and uh, you're able to avoid a lot of the office distractions. My wife has been off from her position as well and wants to do all kinds of things around the house. So <laughs> I've had to resort to other locations around the house to try and operate from. So it's created a little bit of challenge. Um, and then, you know, not having uh, ready access to some of the resources at the office that you traditionally rely on to do certain <clears throat> certain things and other staff members. So, um, you know, in our world, moving things quickly uh, is often the important value in it. So not having ready access or having to consult with another person digitally without a quick conversation uh, has posed a little bit of a challenge. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So what Keith is not politely saying to you all that when the chancellor has to get out a message to the public and has to do it on a Sunday afternoon or um, at seven o'clock at night, it is Keith <laughs> who gets the call and gets to go to the computer and make all that happen. Our wonderful coronavirus update site, all those things are the work of, of he and his colleagues. And um, yeah, 24 seven, I think is a good description since, I say since March the 2nd. Oh, since March the 2nd, we've been doing COVID 24 seven, uh, pretty much, yeah, yeah. Well, Tyler, what about you? Well, at least for the registrar's office, um, ASU BB, like several other community colleges in the state that I know, are very paper process heavy. Um, and so moving to remote work and removing to having limited contact with our staff and students um, has had us try and find ways that we can maintain that accurate documentation trail of students dropping or withdrawing or um, final grade postings and changing of grades, just making sure that we maintain that accuracy of that student's record without losing that documentation, even if it has to be, let's do this in an email, and then we're going to make that email PDF and upload it. Um, 
the other thing that I think has been really challenging is, you know, ASUBB is unique amongst community colleges in that we do not charge students for their transcripts. But what that does mean is that we are processing our student transcripts um, here at ASUBB. So we've had to come up with a very good schedule to make sure that we're still able to maintain those requests, especially now when a lot of the graduates we're going to mention today are transferring, trying to get their advising done at their transfer institutions, uh, going into their career field and need that proof of their academic record and some of their educate and some of their courses. Yeah, yeah. And so there's been a constant stream of folks coming and going in your office, masked up, wiping in, wiping out, um, just so we can get those things done for our students. Yeah, yeah. Appreciate that very much. Well, um, early on in this public health crisis, um, as we began to learn to do things differently and learn um, new things, I just happened to say somewhere along one day, we might ought to ask the commencement committee to put a little thought into what might happen if in the far, far reaching chance that we might not get to have our traditional commencement exercises. We have three. Um, in the spring, actually four, really. Um, on Friday night, we have a Hebrew Springs commencement ceremony. We have two ASUBB commencement ceremonies to get everyone in the space on the Saturday, and that is followed by an Arkansas State University commencement ceremony on our campus for the students in the University Center. So it is a quite, quite a busy 24 hours. Um, so I just mentioned that to the commencement committee um, and you guys took it from there. So tell me a little bit about that conversation, what it was like and how this idea um, evolved. Tyler, you wanna go first? Sure, so I mean, we had, um, the question had been asked in the committee earlier in the semester. And at that point, the conversation was, we are going to plan to have a lot, an in-person one, and we're gonna have our, begin developing our plan B to make sure that we still get to honor our students at the time of their graduation. Um, and that was really, I think, the key point that the committee wanted to work out was, we didn't want to delay that celebration of the students, we wanted to find a way to have that celebration when they're actually graduating, whatever format that would take. And so there from the committee, we all branched out and did a little research. And there are other institutions that have done uh, online and virtual uh, ceremonies, not related to any um, extenuating circumstances like we're dealing with now. Um, so we were able to find some examples and talk with Keith and his staff about what our capabilities are um, to see what we could put together to really, really show how proud we are of our students. Um, so even if they couldn't come back and walk in a future ceremony, which they're all invited to do, um, we still have that celebration of them right now. Um, and only and here just recently, um, registrars around the state started a, we all have a group registrar email club, um, <laughs> start asking um, what vendors or service providers are you using to make your virtual commencement for you? And I just replied back with the link to our webpage saying, well, we're, doing ours in-house and that's because Keith and his staff are really rolling up their sleeves on it. Right, so, so Keith, you and your staff, most of the work of this thing um, has fallen, um, fallen to you to actually get things um, choreographed and videoed and, and those things. So tell everybody a, bit, a little bit about that process and the challenges um, of that process. Well, as, uh, as Ty mentioned, yeah, the discussion was going back and forth of could we do this uh, and then Ty had uh, as you mentioned with some research, punched up uh, a few links to some other colleges that we examined. And uh, then I started thinking, what capabilities did we have? And so initially, of course, as you remember, we talked about just using the social distancing and doing it in a theater and still having it much the same as a live event. And then suddenly that became uh, not even possible. <laughs> so with that, uh, in consultation with uh, one of my other staff members who is really bearing the brunt of most of this. I, I've helped him out, uh, but he's actually doing the editing. We, uh, we got with Ty on the script, uh, the way things work. And like most people are not aware, Hollywood does not shoot a movie in <laughs> chronologic order. Uh, so we did that as well here that uh, it became a scheduling nightmare almost to get, because people are social distance and working remotely to, 
but we need you with the same background at the same location when it's convenient for you sometime in the next three days, if it's okay. And so it became uh, a scheduling ASU to get them and still not have everyone here to maintain uh, compliance with the protocols and social distancing. And so we, uh, we set up kind of a makeshift studio here in our uh, marketing office. And uh, so we make it look as, as natural as possible with a few additions to the script to make it uh, appear that it flows consecutively as one speaker to the next to the next. So the editing is the key part uh, because almost all of it's pre-recorded. So that, that's the key thing of bringing all the parts together and that's the orchestration that uh, Ty and I have been going back and forth with to make sure that everything, we, we, we captured everything. So we've got all this, we've got all that, everything is, is in the can, so to speak. And so now we're stirring it to make the, make the soup yeah. So, for instance, on the day that, that I recorded um, my part, we almost forgot the turning of the tassels, which is one of the most important. I just love that, part, love that part of the ceremony. And because it was way far down here on the bottom of the script, we had pulled all the rest of my script up and they kindly put it up on the wall to help me out so I can see it and um, all, all of these things. And I went, ah, oh, turning in the tassels. We forgot about turning in the tassels because that's a, an important uh, an important part of it. So it's gonna flow pretty much from Dr. Bartlett singing to the national anthem to me inviting students to turn their tassels the way it would have if we were here live. Uh, it's just gonna happen for the first time um, on YouTube, right? On Saturday morning at, at 10 o'clock. Yes, ma'am. Yeah. Um, so, so uh, it's been a very, very exciting process. Um, any, um, anything we've learned out of this process, do you think, in trying to bring virtual celebrations to our students that will uh, make us better even next year? Um, should we have to do this again or just in our regular commencement ceremonies? Uh, from our perspective and the technical side of it, uh, we, we definitely have learned a few uh, skip tricks <laughs> in doing things here uh, and uh, kind of making some adjustments to our studio and, and uh, definitely we'll have to add some more lighting. That was, that was a problem yeah. <laughs> to start with. But Don't you think it's fair to say, Keith, that we're videoing more, much more comfortably than before this pandemic? I mean, we are. in a video are. podcast, for goodness sake. Absolutely <laughs> right. And, and, um, Thanks to you know myself with some broadcast experience uh, in the past, as well as Chance, who is our master editor here. Uh, his degree was in filmmaking and things from Harding, and so um, the two of us together have really brainstormed it very, very well. And so we we hope that everyone enjoys uh, how we have pulled it together, and uh, it it will definitely not be like any other that is going on right now in Arkansas. I think you're right. Um, Tyler, why don't you share a little bit about the process of how the graduates, as opposed to walking across the stage, how that's going to work? Because that, too, was a great deal of work on, on the part of your office to make that happen. Yeah, so one of the things that's always been a challenge about our in-person graduation is knowing just who's actually going to attend the 9 of, um, because they may indicate they're planning to attend on their graduation application, but it's not until that weekend that sometimes those plans solidify for our students. So for us, it was really a challenge of making sure that we contact all of our students who had plant or who had filled out their graduation application. And even if they said they weren't going to participate in the original commencement, since this was not going to require their physical presence, that might actually change their willingness to participate in this virtual one. Um, so it was really about sending more emails and texts than, you know, all of our students currently right now, I think they're, they're a little bit email and text overloaded, um, social media message overloaded, but making sure that that message got out to them consistently enough that they knew that we were planning to celebrate them and that we were going to actually include them in the ceremony to the best of our ability. So their participation, instead of walking across um, the gym and shaking your hand as we've developed, um, Keith's team has developed some very nice slides that students were able to submit a photo of themselves. Could be any photo as long as it was appropriate. Um, didn't have to be in regalia. We had to assure a few students, you, you don't have to have your regalia, just send whatever picture you really want out there. Um, 
as well as a quote though, so that we can include that on their slides. You know, our students really like decorating their caps um, during our ceremonies and not having the in-person means they may not be able to decorate their cap. So given the ability to express themselves um, through that picture, through that quote, so that's going to be displayed as their personality and their mark for the leaving um, as they're graduating. Uh, so during the ceremony itself, we're going to read their names just like we would at the regular ceremony. And that slide with their picture and their information will be put up on screen for the entire world at this point um, to see on YouTube. Um, and even our students who have special honors and regalia outside of their, um, just their degrees, um, Keith's team made up some excellent, excellent little PNG images and we've contacted all the advisors for those groups so that even though we have a picture without, of you that might not have regalia, we've actually added some regalia to you um, so student, people will know those special honors that you've received. Yeah, that's awesome. So it's those little details that have just been really, you know, really uh, special and will be very meaningful to our students, I think. Um, as we go through this. Well, okay, um, I think everybody gets the idea and I certainly hope they get the idea of how proud we are. You can see that our faculty and staff just were not willing to let commencement go <laughs> um, and the hard work. I generally give guests the opportunity to ask me a question, so I'll do so now. Tyler, you got a question for me? Uh, are there any elements of this virtual commencement that you think you would like to see incorporated in our in-person? You know, I have been thinking, I have been thinking about that. Those slides and that, now that we have the cords and, and all those things um, worked out, um, you know, it's worth thinking about some sort of capture after it is over. Um, we're getting awfully comfortable and we're getting a lot of video out there in the world. Um, that, that might be something um, that's worth the time. The other thing I've been thinking about is, um, um, you know, we have dabbled with streaming, and, and one of the things I'm excited about is that we're going to do it all at once, all campuses, all students, but it's just not physically possible to do that um, if we had to fit everybody into the gym. Mm -hmm. And so I think our, our, our technology game may up a little bit so that um, some guests who aren't getting in the door right now perhaps could be in the Owen Center watching a stream. We might be a little more comfortable with that now. We might be comfortable with saying, hey, sit at home in your living room and watch us um, graduation, even when we do have a face-to-face, -face, and, and that way we can broaden the number of people who can celebrate with our graduates. And our faculty, we don't even have all of our faculty um, at each ceremony, again, for the size of it. And so every faculty member could actually, in that way, participate in every ceremony. And the fact that we're too large for our gym becomes less less of an issue um, and we can enjoy that more together and then have some some memories captured um, by video and keep smiling and going that's why <laughs> that, that'll be the thing for next year I guess if we get hey, to I'm just, we, we keep dreaming <laughs> we keep dreaming big and I, I'm thinking uh, you know I got a multi-camera set up broadcast yeah this is gonna be way cool <laughs> this is going to be way cool. This is going to be way cool. But anyway, I, uh, so so I think there are some things that students are really going to appreciate, and they're going to make us better. I do, I do. Thank you for that, Keith. Um, I know originally coming into this when you started in the position here, you were a little reticent about being on camera. And how has that has that worked for you switching to this? I know uh, yet you've tasked us a lot to help you, but um, in in working with that and being more comfortable in doing it. Yeah, so so Keith is perfectly right. I do not like to have my picture taken. I like to be the one taking the pictures. I don't like to see myself on camera. I don't like to hear my voice. Um, so what he's really asking is how about adjust it because I'm doing a video podcast now. Well, I, I'm a researcher and I think I, I told you guys when I had this idea, I'm going to capture these conversations. We can broadcast them or not. I want to capture these conversations because I think there's much here to learn <laughs> about how we're doing things differently and learning something new. Um, and so for the purposes of these, just like I do in campus forums and things like that, as long as I don't look at myself, as long as I don't look at the square that's me <laughs> um, right now, I just get into my old teacher researcher mode and I can do that all day long every day. So put me out here under the arch, you know, trying to pose as, as the chancellor, you know, I don't like it at all, but um, <laughs> teaching, talking, I can do that. 
I don't rewatch these except uh, the very beginning and the very end to make sure Chance has what he needs um, there and that it recorded very well. And if I do rewatch them, I look at the person I'm interviewing, not myself and, um, <laughs> and things like that. Yeah. So you just got to get me in teacher mode, Keith, and I'm okay. <laughs> So we'll, we, we don't let you run in the ditch. We keep you, no, we keep you aligned. You don't. Y'all do a fantastic job and, and, and uh, put, up, put up with a lot. Um, <laughs> <laughs> that is my idiosyncrasy. Well, okay. Um, we generally end this by asking uh, me, asking the guests, you know, this public health crisis, it's been challenging to us in so many ways, personally and professionally, but, um, but we have to look at what the silver linings are. Um, so what is the silver lining of this current public health situation and the way that we've had to work? And it could be a silver lining for you, for ASUBB, for our state, for our nation, whatever it is um, that you see. And Keith, I'll let you go first. What's the silver lining? Um, well, I think it is forcing us to rethink um, how we do some things and, and evaluate the, uh, the way we've always done something. And, and as Ty mentioned earlier, you know, we were paper heavy in a lot of our processes. And so by switching from yeah, doing certain things to um, not necessarily abandoning them, but doing them uh, a different, better, more efficient way, uh, incorporating the technology, uh, using video and, and this very format, uh, it's, it's a prevalent something. And so uh, being able to utilize it and uh, capture that that information and pass it in a format that our students truly enjoy. Um, we, you know, if you notice the traffic on, on your podcast are, are picking up as everyone's, Oh, that's a, you know, it wasn't just a one-off thing. It's happening every week. So uh, they, they actually tune in now. They look forward to it. Who's is she going to have next time? So um, I think that's been the silver lining of looking at some of our capabilities and uh, challenging um, doing things a little bit differently in, in an old process. To, so how can we uh, bring that into the 21st century, so to speak? Yeah, I agree. I think that that is a, across the board in lots of instances, instruction, services, um, everything. Yeah, good. Ty, what about you? Uh, on the personal front, I've spent a lot more time on Zoom with old friends of mine. Um, <laughs> It's funny how we haven't been able to hang out in person, or we haven't hung out in person in a while, but now we've got poker nights on Tuesdays. Um, we've got um, get-togethers on Thursdays, all on Zoom. Um, so just personally, actually, this has actually had a lot of our my old friends reconnecting um, in ways that we just hadn't before. Um, as far as here at ASUBB, I think, you know, we talked to our students about learning how to learn. Um, so it's not necessarily that we've learned new processes, but we've learned how to deal with disruption. Um, so even though we might have a different disruption that changes things differently for us next time, we've got that elasticity and that knowing how we can communicate to each other to overcome that challenge. Uh, so I think just knowing how to in encounter a disruption in our business practices and evolve to meet those, whatever that is, uh, it's going to be really important for us in the next several years. I agree. Because the more things change, the faster they change, right? Mm -hmm. Well, we want to make sure we invite everyone to join us on Saturday. So real quickly, Ty, tell everyone how they can join us on Saturday for ASUBB virtual graduation. Uh, they can go to um, www.youtube.com slash AS channel slash ASUB official, ASUBB official. Um, so if you just go to YouTube and type in ASUBB, it will be the top channel and the live stream will be there. That's awesome. That's awesome. And we certainly hope everybody's going to be able to join us. Keith, you were going to add something? Yeah, we will also have a uh, link on the commencement page at the ASUBB slash commencement. Uh, when you go to that page, you'll slide down and see the announcement video as well, but there'll be a button below that that will have the link to uh, take you right to the broadcast. And uh, as well, we'll have the uh, digital version of the graduation program there. So uh, family, faculty, friends, whoever can actually go there, download it, and you'll have that to, uh, as kind of that keepsake. 
That's kind of a keepsake. Yeah, exactly. Well, guys, thank you so much for your work. And I know um, lots of folks from your offices and lots of folks from the committee and across campus have been in on the work too. But thank you for your leadership uh, for making this happen to our students. I mean, I've enjoyed our conversation. So this has been learning something different, doing things differently, learning something new. And we cheated a little bit today. It may have been a little bit more than five questions and it may have been a little bit more than 15 minutes, but we appreciate you um, joining us. We're trying to learn what we can out of this public health crisis. Next time, um, I will be joined by Frank N. Taylor II. Um, Frank is from our Student Life Office. He manages our student center um, in the evening and, and has a lot of activity with our students. We have had some students who have been here in the dorm this entire time. Um, and so he has a lot of insight on not only how they've served those students safely, uh, but what those students have been going through. And in addition, Frank works a job that is not at ASUVB. And so he has the perspective of how other places of work have been dealing with the COVID-19 crisis. So I look forward to talking to Frank next time and I hope you'll join us. Thank you.